Okay. All right. So I'm the president of the Mission Viejo chapter. Um, we have a little bit of an identity problem because here in Laguna Woods, we have been the Hearing Well Club for 12 years. Actually, I think it's 13 years now. And so um, right when the pandemic started, the Mission Viejo chapter uh, closed, the officers retired, and there was nobody available to step up. So um, I requested to merge with the Mission Viejo chapter. And what that did was that uh, gave me all those people that I can now welcome to this meeting. But it also made us a 501c3 nonprofit. And, um, and, and I wanted to do that. Uh, also, during the pandemic, we have the City of Orange chapter decided to close. Um, they weren't going to be able to get their meeting space again. They couldn't find a meeting space. And one thing after another, and they closed. So they've merged in with the Mission Viejo chapter. Now, just to make things simple, eventually, we're going to go through a name change this summer. And it requires letting the IRS know. It requires letting the California um, uh, Attorney General's Office know, the Franchise Tax Board, all of those people have to be aware. And we are going to become the Hearing Loss Association of America Orange County Chapter. So it's just going to be all inclusive of the entire county of Orange. And I'm going to be very happy about that. But because we've been here for so long as the Hearing Well Club, it's okay if you want to refer to us as the Hearing Well Club, because even the recreation department where I make my reservations for this room and pay our fees, they can't seem to change. <laughs> they keep calling us the Hearing Well Club, so that's fine. Um, I, I want to make an announcement that uh, with all this reorganizing, we have a whole lot of um, positions that we need to fill. So I'm going to be working on that during the summer. But in the meantime, the uh, board of directors for the Mission Viejo chapter, which is Jeff Chess, who is the treasurer, he's back there. Um, Judy Martin is our secretary. She's not with us today, um, but we have appointed a vice president. I'd like to introduce you to Marla Peoples. So Marla, for a very long time, she founded the City of Orange chapter. And then when she um, stepped down uh, for a new batch of officers, then uh, then she just was a mentor to the City of Orange chapter. So anyway, I've been, we've invited her. We appointed her to be vice president. Her job is going to work, help me work with programs. So getting speakers, uh, getting topics to talk about. So welcome, Marla. So glad to have you on board. Right now, she's helping by actually um, updating the bylaws because we have to have an updated bylaws that we send to the IRS along with our tax ID number and franchise tax board and all of that. Okay. Um, and I also want you to know that, that some, it's been mentioned to me that the Hearing Loss Association sounds like a trade association, and it is not. Um, the, when this organization was founded in 1979, it was the self-help for hard of hearing people. And it was started by Rocky Stone, who's ex-CIA, Washington, DC. And they had, there was no help for deaf and hard of hearing people. And he started having support meetings in his basement. 
So back east, you know, they don't have garages like we do here. They have basements. So she was, he was having started there. But things just snowballed and got bigger and bigger and bigger. And by 1993, they were able to bring him on board as an executive director of self-help for hard of hearing people. And it wasn't until the mid nineties that we went through a name change. The executive director at that time wanted to do a name change and we became the Hearing Loss Association of America. And depending on what city you're in, it has the uh, regional name. So we will be, when you come back in the fall, we will be the the Orange County chapter. So just give you a little information. We are not a trade organization. Um, okay, before I go on to the next thing, this meeting is being recorded and we upload it as well as all of the other meetings we've ever had since 2014. Um, so there's a lot of good information on our YouTube channel. So I invite you to subscribe to the channel and you can comment, share, like, all of those things, it makes a difference. Okay. This is the disclaimer. Um, the Hearing Loss Association of America does not endorse any single product or service. This meeting is intended to provide information, education, advocacy, and support. So we do have uh, people here who have things to sell. That does not mean that we are endorsing them. Please take whatever information you find valuable and do your own research. Okay. Um, all right. Caption Call is a sponsor. And Caption Call is a uh, service that provides captioning for your landline phone and for your mobile phone. And it is free. It's just an app you download uh, from iPhone or Android in the in the Play Store. Um, the the phone that is available, you have to order Caption Call, and they'll send somebody out to install it and show you how to use it. And when those important calls come in from your doctor, you will be able to see what they're saying if you can't understand them. And you know. There are a lot of people who have accents and that's one of my big problems. So uh, providing the captions is very, very helpful. All right, so caption call actually provides the captioning that you see here. So um, Joe Gale is, is located right now in Chicago, Illinois, and through the wonders of the internet, she's hearing what I'm saying, and she's typing it out like a court reporter. But her job title is captioner, so, all right. Not an endorsement, but, oh, there's a picture of Joe. <laughs> this room, this room has a hearing loop. And if you don't know what that is, that's something I would like to spend time talking to you about. But for right now, for those who do know, you just need to flip the switch on your hearing aid or on your cochlear implant, and you will hear what I'm saying directly in your ear, in your hearing aids or through your cochlear implant. And what that does is that just, it just shuts down all the background noise no background noise, just hear it directly, clear and clean. So if you have um, if you have a telecoil, now's the time to turn it on. And if you have hearing aids or a cochlear implant and you don't know if you have a telecoil, you need to ask your hearing hearing aid or cochlear implant provider. It's just a matter of of programming your hearing aids, if it has one. Okay, let's just see here. Uh, so a telecoil is literally a little copper wire that's inside, um, you can see it's inside the hearing aid, 
And it can, it's also in many of the ones that go in the ear, but the smaller the hearing aid gets, the less likely there is to be a telecoil. So uh, this is where, well, this is what a T-coil is. And this is the different sizes of telecoils as a, next to a dime. So you can, it's pretty small. All right. Again, we are a 501c3 tax organization, uh, 501 tax exempt um, organization. So any donations you make, um, we're happy to give you a receipt. And and if your your CPA tells you that that it's deductible, they look at your whole situation. We also take bequests, and um, and we're happy to take. Uh, there's no membership. It's free to come to these meetings. So you're all very welcome. But we would like your donations. All right. I am the president, and that's my email address. We have our we do have our website. I invite you to take a look at that. By the way, I personally have been advocating to put hearing loops. Or and system devices here in Laguna Woods. And so I have this little piece of paper here that shows all the hearing loops that are in the village. And there's 10 meeting rooms that have hearing accessibility. Now you're not gonna believe this. This is the only one of these I have today. The whole folder with a bunch of these is missing. <laughs> but I'm going to send it all out. If you give me give me your email address, I'll send you one of these. Um, also, I want to give you a little report. Clubhouse 3 has a hearing loop in dining room 2, dining room 1, and in the main theater. But they seem to be broken. Now there's no practically no maintenance, but what happened with Clubhouse 2 is they replaced the flooring, but they didn't tell the flooring people and it got ripped up. So, um, and now they need to find somebody to repair it. One of the primary purposes, I'm gonna read, read this short little thing here from our uh, bylaws. Our primary purpose is to educate ourselves, our families, friends, co-workers, teachers, hearing health care providers, industry, government, and others about hearing loss. Nobody is an expert but you about your hearing loss. So here you learn about hearing loss and what you can do. HLAA provides adults and children with tools for self-help, sensitizes the general population, about the special needs of people with hearing loss. And boy, we really need to practice that here in Laguna Woods because they shouldn't be tearing up a floor that has a hearing loop, okay? And they did that in this room. This room had to be redone. This is a brand new floor and it had to be uh, redone. And it was out of commission for a couple of months. So. We need to let ourselves be known. We need to talk. If anybody uh, ever writes to the Globe, to the letters to the editor, please complain about them not getting these hearing loops back up and working properly. They need a letter. Uh, go down to the uh, recreation department and say, when is that hearing loop going to be repaired? When is that assistive device going to be replaced? We're too quiet, we're invisible. We need to be more visible to our community, especially our, our leadership, the administration. Okay. Um, so that's really what we're all about, learning how to take care of ourselves and advocate for ourselves. All right, now we're going to, we're gonna get right to our program. I want to welcome everybody that's on Zoom. I hope you can hear. Alan, is everybody hearing okay? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Are you able to hear me? Now I want to uh, introduce you to um, 
Anne Mundell Noel and Dr. Gabby. Let's see here. And just give you a, a little idea of and who, how they got to be here. Anne Mundell Noel has been an audiology advisor for the Hearing Well Club over 10 years. We I got we got to figure out how many years it is. It's, it's got to be 11 years at least. Yes. And she comes to practically every single meeting. But I want you to know we don't endorse her per se. We just don't. There's a lot of people who use her. They love her. You might in, she may be great for you, but she's here answering questions and and giving us new information. Uh, pretty often. She also helps me to get presenters, which is very difficult right now because um, they don't want to come in and present. They want to zoom in. So anyway, so Anne has been very helpful through the development. And then, of course, then the, the pandemic ha happened and we're now struggling to get back. So Anne, please come up here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we are kind of a fill in today for um, Tony because at the last minute, um, Otakon was going to present for her, but they, um, because we weren't doing Zoom at the time, they could not present. So they are coming back in June because now she does have both the Zoom and the in-person meeting. And so on the fly, we are here, but we are talking today about May being Better Hearing Month. And I just want to find out from you, how many of you saw our presentation on this day and you came because of that? Okay. How many of you saw the ad in the newspaper and you came because of that? Okay. And how many of you um, came because Tony sent out an email? The majority. Great members. Is there anybody who just came by word of mouth or, okay, you got a couple of them. Great. Wonderful. Just trying to figure out the best way to try to grow this. Before COVID, Tony had over 70 to 100 people at the meeting in person. It was a great group. There was a lot of socialization, um, camaraderie, besides the information that was presented. And that's what we are trying to get back, is that we just want to be a support and, quote, ears for you, right? So you need to talk to her. I do want to give kudos to Tony because all those loops in Laguna Woods would not have happened without her relentless effort. So she really deserves a round of applause for all of that. And that really is her legacy. And so um, I think it would be important for this group to work together with professionals and with the members to try to get more loops and make more of an awareness. Um, so that's just my kind of side for Tony is that the more involved you get and the bigger voice you have, the more you're going to benefit. How many right now are using the T-coil in their hearing aid? Okay. Well, the sound system in here is so good. And so it's not as necessary as it is maybe in the Performing Arts Center. But what we want to do is I want to bring up Dr. Gabby. Um, she has been with me since July of last year. And she's just going to run through some facts about hearing, hearing loss. And then we have... Um, Scott Daly from Widex, who is um, going to graciously talk about some assistive devices and what's available for all manufacturers, but he's going to talk about his specifically. And then we're gonna do a Q and A. But before we do all of that, how many of you have a number? Um, did you get, all get a number? Who doesn't have a number? Is there anybody who didn't get a number? Okay, because that's for drawing for prizes at the end. So you wanna make sure you have a number. Okay, here's Dr. Gabby. Hello, everybody. 
All right. So we want to keep this lighthearted. We want to give you guys time to ask us questions. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time um, talking up here, gabbing up here. Uh, so we're just going to kind of go through these quickly. Um, we May is better hearing speech and hearing month. So we just wanted to touch on some of the really important things aside from hearing uh, that kind of come along with keeping your brain and your ears all in check. So hearing is related to your overall balance. The same nerve that controls your hearing organ also controls your balance organ. So the two are closely related. Uh, hearing is also related to overall memory and brain health. As your ears collect the sound, the sound is getting transmitted through the auditory pathway up to the brain, which involves a lot of other things aside from just your ears. So untreated hearing loss is closely related to overall cognitive function. Uh, different things like dementia, Alzheimer's are closely related to an untreated hearing loss. So hugely important to stay on top of hearing health because that's also your brain health. Um, another thing is your overall emotional health. I hear a lot from patients that when they're not hearing their best, there's some anxiety that goes into it when you're going to go into an environment where you know you're not going to be hearing your very best. If you know you're going to have to ask people to repeat themselves or you're feeling sort of anxious, a lot of times people choose to just stay home and not go to said event. Um, so overall emotional health, with isolation and depression, also very closely related to hearing and hearing loss. As an audiologist, I'm an audiologist, and as an audiologist, we can not only assess how your hear, how your ear is hearing, but we can look at the anatomical structures, uh, make sure there's no wax, remove it if there is. We can talk about things like tinnitus, which is the ringing or the buzzing in your ears. And we can talk about different treatment options, uh, either with devices, different kind of counseling tools. But we wanted it to be nice and clear as to what an audiologist can do and how we can help you. There was supposed to be a couple manufacturers today, but an emergency came up. So we have Scott Daly here with Widex, who we're very thankful is here. Um, he's going to talk about a few different techniques, uh, devices, things that you can do to make sure you're hearing your very best. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. So if, if you're seeing this online, it was a standing ovation. Um, everyone is just going crazy in here. But um, thank you for being here. What a great organization you guys have. And uh, glad that you're here and, and hope to have more numbers uh, as this meeting um, goes on. Um, what I'd like to talk about today is what you have in terms of options after you've been fit with hearing aids and hearing devices, but you still need some improvement or help even after you've received the hearing aids. And there still be maybe situations where you were hopeful for improvement and it's not as good as you'd want. Now what? And so I'm going to speak um, about accessories that are available through Widex, but I will tell you that any hearing aid manufacturer will have products that are very similar in use and function. So the information is relevant to those who wear Widex hearing aids, but it's also relevant to those who wear another type of hearing aid because there is certainly going to be something that is in the ballpark of what we're talking about. Okay. So the first thing that I want to start and talk about is a remote control. Um, thank you. Um, so we see with hearing aids today versus hearing aids of 20 years ago that they are shrinking in size. Um, all of us have some 
measure of vanity and we want something that is small and discreet and hearing aids really have gone that direction to where they're much more small and discreet, which is great until it's not. And so what we see a lot of times is that the little tiny button on hearing aids can be hard to access, particularly if you have some dexterity issues. And so one thing that can be very useful with the use of hearing aids is a remote control. Um, and these are very simple and easy to use. Um, I would also recommend that most, especially Bluetooth hearing aids, have an app on your smartphone that allows you to control volume in different environments. So if you are frustrated with your ability to change the settings of your hearing aids in a particular situation, and you don't wanna fuss with apps or your cell phone, one thing that can be incredibly useful is a simple remote control. Um, and so very useful accessory if you wanna get a little more out of your hearing aid. Um, another thing that I find to be incredibly useful when you're at home and wanna hear the TV better, um, most manufacturers have TV accessories that will plug in to the back of your television so that you can stream the signal directly into your hearing aids. So that can be incredibly useful if you're finding that there's a volume imbalance between you and perhaps someone you live with where your preferred volume maybe is a little bit louder or softer. And as a result, you can't ever get the volume to where everyone's happy. There are accessories wherein you can simply plug it into the back of your TV and have the sound go straight into your ears. Beyond that, when you do so, now the sound doesn't have to travel 10 feet into your hearing aids. It has to travel about 10 millimeters, right? From the hearing aid into your eardrum, which is really nice. So if you have difficulty with TV or there is that volume imbalance between you and a significant other, um, this can be a really nice, uh, useful thing to hear the TV better and uh, improve your relationship. Um, one very common complaint, regardless of how wonderful the audiologist may fit your hearing aid to your exact hearing loss and just get everything just right, still to this day, the number one complaint of people who wear hearing aids is how they hear in noise, right? In a restaurant, in a group setting, it's still problem number one when it comes to the hearing impaired wearing hearing devices. So I tell you this, it is not for lack of effort on the manufacturers trying to improve that. And it is not for lack of skill and knowledge from your audiologists. They know what they're doing. They're fitting you correctly doing everything they can to make you successful. Perhaps, and this is maybe my opinion and you can disagree or agree with me, but perhaps nothing will take your hearing to the next level quite like a remote microphone. So most hearing aids today have the ability to add an accessory that is a remote microphone. Ours happens to be very small and discreet. What a remote microphone is capable of is allowing you to hear significantly better in hard to hear situations where there's high levels of background noise. The way these work is you basically turn them on and you can either have an individual wear said microphone or, oh, thank you, look at that. Or you can use it as a tabletop microphone so if you're in a group setting, you're maybe at a circular table and there's four or five individuals you wanna hear, you can simply place the microphone in the middle. Thank you, yep, look at Tony helping there. And what will happen is the hearing aids are actually gonna give a lot more emphasis to picking up sound that comes from the microphone right around. So we're not hearing as much of the table over there that's laughing really hard at a joke that was just told and we can hear the conversation better. So if you struggle hearing in noise, 
and you don't have a remote microphone, I might suggest when you talk to your hearing care provider, that should be a conversation you have because nothing will get you to that place of, I could hear better in noise quicker than a remote microphone. Okay. Um, let's see. Two other things. Um, what's interesting post uh, pandemic is we are seeing individuals travel a lot more. Hearing aids are smarter than they've ever been. And one accessory that Widex has, and this is something uh, one way or another that you can utilize with other manufacturers as well, is the ability to do remote programming, which is really neat. So it used to be if you're on a trip of a lifetime to Italy or France, or maybe you're just in New York and you're feeling like, Hmm, something's not quite right with my hearing aids. I think they need a little bit of a tune-up. We now have the ability where you can actually see your audiologist remotely and have your hearing aids programmed in any part of the world so long as you have a internet connection, which is really neat. So hearing aids really have advanced quite tremendously. And in terms of convenience for you, if there were some reason, and I've seen use even locally where if an individual were bed bound and unable to come into the office, they're still able to receive adjustments to the hearing aids to get it to their preferred settings from their home, which is very, very convenient. Um, one thing that is new with Widex in particular, you're not going to see it in a lot of places just yet otherwise, but I suspect it'll be coming for many others. We see a lot, and this meeting is a good example, a lot more Zoom and a lot more uh, remote video conferencing happening. And so there hasn't really been a super convenient, easy way for hearing aids to talk to computers. We're very good with cell phones but direct to the computer has been a little bit of a challenge for hearing aids over the years. We have a brand new device and I don't know if anyone's gonna be able to see it because of how small it is, but we actually have a new little USB dongle that allows your hearing aids to connect right into your computer. So if you wanted to listen to a call or a meeting like this, you can do so. Same for YouTube videos, Facebook videos, anything that you're doing on the computer. If you want the volume to stream directly into your hearing aids, we have a new device that allows you to do that. And so um, in summation, I would just say when it comes to your ability to hear in multiple situations, if you're left wanting a little bit after making a significant investment in your hearing aids, I might suggest to you that there's a lot of accessories that can really get you to where you want to be with your hearing care. Um, and again, if I haven't made it abundantly clear, regardless of the hearing aid you're wearing, a remote microphone for noise, nothing you can spend your money on will do more to improve your hearing than a remote microphone. Big, big fan. So that's all I got. Thank you. Yes. So her question is, with all the accessories, where do you get it? You would go to your hearing care provider and ask them about it. They would have the ones that would match the hearing aids that you have. Okay. Um, I think Randy here, um, one of our members, has a sound assist on. Um, who else uses accessories? Do how many of you use any hearing aid accessories? A couple. Okay. The TV box. Yeah. Nobody else uses the a couple more for the TV. How many people use the TV box? Okay. More. Yep. The Raz out there, our volunteer out there. Um, yeah. So look into them because the advantage of all of those devices is to take the strain off the brain, right? So when you're in groups and background noise, what's happening is most of you in here, the way your ears are damaged, 
physiologically, your brain is not repressing background noise like it does for somebody with normal hearing. So the more hearing loss you have, the more physiologically your brain is not saying, keep the noise down so that I can hear through it. So you, you can't be a, um, an eavesdropper, right? But the advantage of that sound assist or any of the remote mics is that the speech comes in and it's so close to the mouth that it takes away the background noise. So you're improving what we call the signal to noise ratio. The signal or the voice is coming in louder than the background noise. Does that make sense? Anybody have questions about any of the accessories? Trudy, if you wanna come around, wait for the microphone. Does the sound assist give any help when you're riding in an airplane with the sound of the airplane motor and the announcements? Because you want the sound of the airplane motor to be deadened, <laughs> but you want to be able to hear when they say the something. announcements. Thank you for the question. Okay, you want to answer? Sure. Maybe. <laughs> that help? Um, so great question. Um, airplanes are very challenging situations when you have hearing loss and when you have normal hearing, to be quite honest, to be able to hear well. The remote microphone is really designed to work best when it's close to the person that's talking, right? And so, um, so when it comes to your ability to hear, say, the stewardess, uh, if, especially let's say you're in the, the window seat, right? So you're the furthest away. If you were having difficulty because they're trying to whisper, cause it's a late flight. If you were to hand this to them and have them repeat themselves, it would be tremendously beneficial for that situation. When it comes to the overhead announcement of this is your captain speaking, um, that is a situation where this is probably not going to give you a whole lot of benefit. Okay. In, in chat, uh, Alan made a comment that some devices are proprietary, some not. So I think you did address that. Yeah. So most hearing aid accessories and I, I'm struggling to think of any that are not proprietary. So almost always, whatever manufacturer your hearing aid is, the only one that's really going to work for your spe specified hearing aid is the accessory from that manufacturer. And so I, I'm just, I don't know that I can really think of any that are universal that way. The only thing would be things you get from the state of California. Right. So you can get some devices for your cell phone as an amplifier or like the clear sounds, but most of the other ones are specific. We have some questions. Yeah. Uh, two parts. The range of your remote mics. So it ha it uses Bluetooth which is the connection, which has a stable connection to about 25 feet. Okay. Yep. So I've seen instances where, um, particularly with someone that has a more severe hearing loss, where the spouse may wear it around the house so that the individual with the hearing aids can hear them as, you know, maybe one's in the kitchen, one's in the living room. So within 25 feet, great. You get beyond that, then it starts to get a little hit or miss. Okay, uh, tinnitus, uh, any hearing aids that overcome the effect of tinnitus? So I'll say this, that there isn't any cure um, with tinnitus, but I will tell you that the progress made on that end, particularly from Widex, when it comes to different sound therapy for tinnitus, it's better than it's ever been. And we can have a longer conversation maybe afterward, if you'd like to pull me aside. 
I was wondering about the connection to the um, balance. What can be done for your balance? I mean, mine is terrible. I walk around looking at floors all the time because I don't want to fall. Um, as far as the connection between the balance and the inner ear, um, as Dr. Gabby alluded, it's the same nerve. So what you can do to help yourself with balance, one of them is to strengthen your structural system. Um, we've gone through in past classes here about some exercises you can do, but um, how many remember any of the exercises? Were you guys here? All right, then let's stand up and do a couple of them. Everybody stand up, but I want you to put your hands on the table or right near the table. You can grab the back of the chair. That would be great, Tony. She's doing a great example here. And one of the things you can do for balance is to first, and I'm sorry for the people on Zoom, unless Gabby wants to stand there. Oh, that's in my eye. Is what we want to do with balance is we're building our core. So one of the things you do is with your hands near the table or the back of the chair, you lift one leg. And how many can, can you do it? And can you lift one leg? Come on, Jewel, there you go. And so she wants to put it right down. If you would practice your balance, lifting your leg and holding it, lifting your leg and holding, you can do it like this, but strengthening your core is what's really important. Our balance comes from our eyes, our ears, and the bottom of our feet. That's how we stay upright. So if you want to improve your balance, if you've got your ears to the best of their ability, and you've got your eyes to the best of your ability, and you have neuropathy in your feet, which is what a lot of seniors have, you want to try to, as much as you can, get in touch with the feeling of your feet. So you do this exercise at home without shoes on so that you can feel the balls of your feet. And what you want to do is you want to put the pressure more on your toes because your toes grip and help you to balance. I'm not talking about being like on high heels, but to kind of feel the balance. And what you're going to do is if you practice one, two, three, four, five, and if you get good at that, then you let go, one, two, three, four, five. And the more you practice your core, the better you're going to do. The other thing you can do is start to do side to side. You get your brain in tune with what's happening for your balance. And then you can start, move over, lift, down, move over, lift, down. But when we walk, we're really walking on one foot at a time. We don't realize that, but we're not shuffling. We are actually lifting one feet at one foot at a time. So the more you strengthen that core, the better you're going to be at balance. Does that make sense? How many of you do PT? A few of you? No? Um, we do have some PDT um, exercises. We have some balance. You guys can sit down. Thank you. We do have some um, balance exercises that, Tony, I will give you that sheet and you can put it on the website or send out to people. But we have three core exercises for balance that a physical, excuse me, a physical therapy friend of mine gave us that I'm um, happy to share with you. One thing I'll also add is wearing your hearing aids 10 to 12 hours a day is what research says is enough stimulation to get the stimulation to the nerve, which is also responsible for the balance. So it's kind of a, you know, perfect storm when you have hearing loss and you're a little unsteady, but there's lots of different ways to strengthen that. So starting by wearing appropriately fit hearing aids 10 to 12 hours a day is a good start. The other thing that we were talking about is that um, a new study came out, um, well, the results just came out a week ago that I heard of, and it's a study called the ACHIEVE study, 
And what it showed in the study was people who wore hearing aids for three years that were pro appropriately fit, and then people who chose not to wear hearing aids. And they compared their outcome at the end of those three years. And those people that wore the hearing aids, oops, um, those people that wore the hearing aids had a 48% improvement in a less cognitive decline, better balance, and better memory. So if there's anything that you take away from the meeting today, it's that as May being better hearing month, that you recognize the importance of hearing with balance and overall cognitive function and long-term mental health. So you guys are doing a great job with getting involved with the hearing club and learning as much as you can about the subject. Okay, so what I wanna do now, um, is there any other questions, just general questions anybody has? Why do I have trouble with just a certain tone? The gentleman I live with, I can hear everybody else but him, and I know it's not just selective here. That comes hearing. with spousal deafness, and it's called. And it comes when you say "I do." Sorry. <laughs> um, so there's different tones depending upon your hearing loss, and there's a speech range, and it's possible that the hearing aids you have might need a little bit of boost in a certain area. Um, and that's something that you could get checked with with your hearing care provider. <laughs> Thank but you. As a joke, right? The spousal <laughs> deafness coming when you say I do. Scott? The other thing that I would say to that end is um, that sometimes um, speaking as someone who has normal hearing and is married to someone with normal hearing and has both of us repeat ourselves to each other, some of it has to do with communication, right? So I, there's so often when I would counsel patients before I worked for YDX, I would say, make sure you have the attention of the person you want to speak to before you start talking. Because if I say to my wife, hey, Brie, does Mexican sound good for dinner tonight? Versus I'm washing a dish and I say, does Mexican sound good tonight? And she says, huh? a lot of times we're not engaged in the act of listening, right? So if I can get the buy-in up front, hey, Brie, and I know I have her attention before I say something, a, a lot of disputes have put, been put to bed because of that, and a lot of disputes have arisen because we haven't been good about doing that. Good point, but what wife would complain about a husband doing dishes, right? <laughs> Ken. Uh, another thing can be very helpful is to bring that person with you <laughs> to the appointment. You've got that voice right there that it really helps the practitioner work on that particular voice. For sure. The last thing before we're going to do a drawing here and give away some prizes. But before we do that, um, I would just like to bring up Cindy Nuremberg. She is a speech pathologist who is doing oral rehab. So she's helping people with hearing therapy. Um, I have known Cindy for over 30 years. Um, besides being a speech language pathologist, she is also a life coach. And so she has been um, doing a group lesson over at the Florence Sylvester um, Senior Center since January. It's um, $15 for a session and you get some great information about lip reading and compensatory strategies. But I just wanna bring up Cindy and have her give a little hi and a little blurb. Hello. So you're probably thinking, I have a hearing loss. Why do I need a speech therapist? And in oral rehabilitation, the speech therapist works with you to improve your communication competence out in your social environment. So like Ann said, I have two ways of offering my services. I like to think of it kind of, if you think about a camera lens, you can have a big wide lens. And my wide lens service is 
doing a uh, oral rehab class environment. I do that once a month on the third Tuesdays of each month. I will be doing that through the end of the year. And in that situation, we work with different, different areas of communication environments and ways to clarify when you don't, when you haven't heard something. So instead of saying what, huh? Then we talk about what are some, what is some of the language that you could use to help clarify the situation. Quick example, if I said to you, tomorrow we're gonna go to my friend Bill's house. He lives at 36381 Rose Lane. And you heard almost all of it, except what lane it was. If you said to me, huh, what? I would repeat the entire sentence, but you don't need that. You could instead clarify what lane? And my response would be Rose Lane, which would be much clearer to you, much easier to understand. So that's my wide lens. And then I also offer private one-to-one -one therapy. That's where we really zoom in and we deal with your specific deficits in communication. So it may be particular sounds that you can't hear. It may be particular environments that you can't hear in. Um, we start in a very quiet room, one-to-one -one setting. I'm directly across from you. And that's like the perfect hearing environment. So you would probably be very successful in that environment. But life isn't like that, is it? So what, what my task is, is to create some difficulty in the task so that you get practice hearing in noisier situations, in situations with music playing, um, in situations with, um, that are loaded with the sounds that you cannot hear. And it's just a safe place. So if you want to just dip your toe in, the class is the perfect place for you. But if you want to do a deep dive into your communication skills, one-to-one -one therapy is the way to go. Thank you. And she's got fun jokes. Uh, Randy. I, anyway, put that on. I'm sorry. Um, Tony, um, uh, would you, is it, okay, so it's the third. Uh, we'll we'll two, put the information up, but it's the third Tuesday of every month from oh. two to three, 15. Two, 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 15 to three, 15. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We'll send you an email on it, Randy. Okay. 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 Tell me what to say something. Oh, okay. Okay. Right, so the last thing we're going to do is let's take our numbers. Scott, you want to come up with that orange bowl and her copper bowl in front of you? Yep. Tony's got something she wants to add. Okay. While we're, while they're getting ready to pick the prizes and all of that, um, I would like to um, pass around the uh, donations baskets. Uh, I'm not sure that it's already been passed around. If you've enjoyed this program, if you'd like to see more, show your appreciation, please, by um, contributing a dollar, two dollars. We'd like to see, we would like everybody to contribute three dollars, but I realize not everybody's prepared to do that or they can do that. But so Daniel's bringing his, uh, bringing a basket around. Is there another basket over here? I have two baskets. Okay, so, okay, and so now we're now we're gonna get the the winners, All right? Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Okay, Tony's gonna pick one. Um, we're this is for a ten dollar Trader Joe's gift card. No peeking, she said. Go ahead, number ten. Who's, got Who's number 10? All right. Come on, let's applaud. We're happy for each other. <laughs> okay, this is a gift card and it's sealed. So I am not sure. A mystery. It's um maybe Scratch Bakery or Trader Joe's.
Number six. Number six. Number six. All right. Another winner. Winner, winner, winner. All right. Number 22. Hey. And then the final one is a box of C's candy. One of those was a gift certificate. Um, one of them was $10 to Scratch Bakery. The other one was $25 to Cafe Rio. So, um, and then the, Latin, the uh, Cafe Rio one is from Widex. And then um, Oticon could not be here, but they donated a box of C's candy. So we'll see who the grand prize winner of the C's candy is. Number 29. Who's got 29? Uh, nope. Okay. People, so go ahead, pull another one. Okay. We'll do another one. 17. Remember when you were 17? Oh. Mm -hmm. well, wait a Nobody has 17? A couple of people left. Oh. Okay. All right. All right. Oops. So the last thing, um, we're ending right on time, which is what we would like to do. But if you'd like to, we'd like to have you go grab some cookies, some water, um, and socialize a little bit. Let's talk to each other and get an idea of what's going on. Yeah, please have some coffee and cookies. We've got lots of it. Um, also, our next meeting is Monday, June the 10th. And uh, David from um, Matt, from Oda, M Maji, from Otacon, he will definitely be here for our June meeting. So I hope to see you then. So please stick around, uh, take a couple of cookies home, <laughs> and thank you all for coming. And thank you everybody online for joining in. <laughs>